So how do you participate in digital modes without buying a bunch of radios? Well, stick around. Let's talk about it. Well, that is the million dollar question. How can you get on the D-Star, DMR, System Fusion, NXDN networks without having to buy a radio for each one of them? Well, there's actually a, an easy way to do it, and that's with a piece of software. Uh, and what I'm talking about is Blue DV. Uh, now, they do make it for, uh, for Windows, and that's what we're going to cover today. But they also have a couple different versions. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about this too much because I don't really mess around with Mac or Linux or, or any of those things any more than I, than I need to. So what I'm talking about is a program called Blue DV, uh, and it is by our friend David, PA7LIM. Uh, and he is a software developer and, and a ham radio operator. And this is kind of a neat uh, application here. And what it does is it allows you to use software on your computer to interface with all the different digital modes. And you can use this uh, with a very minimal hardware investment. And what I'm talking about is a, you're going to need a thumb drive uh, by, uh, a, there's a couple different manufacturers. Uh, Northwest Digital Radio makes one. And that is available on their website. Um, Currently, at the time of this uh, recording, uh, it is a on back order sale uh, for ninety nine ninety five. Which, in the big scheme of things, if you're talking about having to buy a radio for each one of those services, uh, you're you're basically about a quarter of the cost. Now, in addition to Northwest Digital Radio, uh, DV Mega also makes one that's uh, available at Gigaparts, and the difference between those two thumb drives is is very minimal. Um, all of the different services, D-Star, DMR, System Fusion, NXDN, they all use this AMBI 3000 uh, chip. So the AMBI 3000 chip is, is essentially a vocoder. And what it does is it takes your spoken voice in, in an analog form and encodes it in, into a digital form that can then be transmitted over the air, across the internet, um, and then when it's the receiving radio or, or device picks it up, it uh, converts it back from, from a digital signal into an analog signal that you can play on a speaker and we can hear with our ears. Now, these two devices are ones that would plug directly into your computer uh, via a USB port. And now there's a couple other devices out there too. Uh, the DV, DV Mega Globetrotter, which is a small network based device that has this chip integrated into it that would allow you to uh, select this as your uh, encoding decoding device and there are some advantages and I'll talk about that in, in, in just a second but in addition to the Globetrotter Zum Radio also makes one too a third option and this is what I personally use you can download the software uh, northwest digital radio has one that's available uh and i think also uh david uh, blue dv has has one but it's a software that you can run on a raspberry pi and and i actually got it on one that does a couple different things uh, and then what i do is it i, I plug that thumb drive into um into, into the raspberry pi and then that uh interfaces with the the chip and then does the encoding and decoding. Um, the, the, the upside to that is, uh, in, in my particular case, I had a bunch of stuff on my USB bus and it, I was having some timing issues. So I offloaded that to another device. And so that's, a, that's an upside. Downside is, is that it's a second device that you have to, to work with. Um, and it is a little bit more expensive, uh, but like in my, my particular case, I just used a Raspberry Pi that I was already using for a couple other utilities that I that I use here in, in, in my shack. Uh, so software, and I'll put links to all this stuff uh, where you can buy these things and, and uh, where to download the software. Um, obviously, you just drill your way down into the operating system that you're going to uh, use and then download the software. The setup, at least on Windows, is fairly simple. It's a couple of quick questions, you know, common ones, location, stuff like that. And follow the defaults and you're good to go. Once the program starts up, you will need to do a couple things. You'll need to go to the Ambi tab and you're going to need to select your microphone and the speakers that you want to use. Um, and 
that's fairly simple. Just pull the menu down and, and select it. You're going to want to go to the update tab and um, to run through each one of these. And it's fairly simple. And then basically you click on it. It's going to ask you, you want to download and overwrite. You select yes. It's going to download the various files. And you just hit OK. So you'll need to do that for all the ones listed in here. And I would recommend that you probably do them on, on a regular basis, maybe once a month. I mean, they obviously, um, things change over time. And as they get updated by the various networks, they get distributed out. Now, I, I'm going to caveat this before we get started. Um, you do not need a license, an amateur radio license, to download this software and to, to use it and listen. But in order to connect to any of these networks, you are going to need one, no differently than you would do it if you had it a radio. Uh, at some point, at some place in the world, depending on where you're connecting and what network, where it gets transmitted out off of a repeater or uh, from somebody's hotspot or something like that, you, you will need to have a valid amateur radio license. Uh, uh, to, to, to be able to use these things. Uh, you will need to have uh, accounts set up for any of the ones that you want to connect to, no differently if, than if you were doing this on a handheld radio or, or a mobile radio uh, and you're going to transmit uh, over the air. So uh, those things still have to be in place. I will put links to all of those uh, down below. So if you don't have one uh, yet, if you haven't gone down this path into, into to the digital modes, uh, there'll be a, a, a place to start there for you. Once, um, once we've got everything updated, we need to go in and go to setup. Now it looks like a lot of information on here, but it's not, uh, not overwhelming. Now this general tab here, uh, has got a bunch of information for RF stuff. If you were actually using this in conjunction with a local radio, so the only thing that we're going to need to do in the general section is to add our call sign. For the D-Star section, you need to decide whether or not you want to enable the D-Star service at startup. And that's literally whether or not this tab is switched on or off. You can do it manually. Uh, and and um, that's, that's going to be a personal preference. And then what default reflector do you want in there? Now, in my particular case, I've got Reflector 30 Charlie. That's one of the more popular ones on D-Star. And you can almost guarantee there's always got to be somebody there for the most part. In XDN, all you need is your ID to, to fill in there. Next section over, DMR. Now, there's uh, information in here um, as far as the DMR type. These are all the, the, the DMR networks that this software will interface with. For the purpose of today, we are only going to be covering Brandmeister. But if you use one of the other services, you would just select them and fill out the appropriate information. Now, Brandmeister will treat this as a hotspot like they do any hotspot that connects into their network. You will need your DMR ID uh, for that. Whether or not you want this enabled at start, so just like DSTAR, do you want the DMR switch turned on when you turn on the, the serial interface? As, as I mentioned, um, I'm using Brandmeister. So the DMR master I'm using is 3104 here in the US. And then because this is a hotspot, you have to uh, authenticate or have, a, have a, a password assigned to your account and that's where you would enter it in. And here mine is obfuscated obviously, but that's because it's for me to know, not you. Uh, if you're using DMR Plus or, or TGIF, there would be some more information in here. System Fusion, uh, QTH location, and System Fusion, you know, obviously when, well, now I, maybe you don't know it, in System Fusion, though, it will, uh, either based on uh, GPS data, if, if you had a radio, it would take your GPS data, uh, or your grid square in, in this case, and it's going to calculate some, you know, rough distance between the station that you're listening to and, and you. Uh, once again, whether or not you want to enable it start up and then what your default reflector is. In my particular case, I am going to the Toads uh, one. And here's really where the big decision-making process is going to come into play. And that's how are you using this? Are you using it with the thumb drive attached to your computer? 
or you're, are you using some external server? If you're using the thumb drive attached to your computer, you would select the top option here. For the model, it would be AMB 3000. You're gonna to need to put your DMR ID in there and then your baud rate for the COM port. In this one, it's 460800. Um, if you are using an external, the Globetrotter, the Zoom Radio, or uh, in my case, the Raspberry Pi with the thumbstick attached to it, um, you would put the IP address of your remote server and then the default port of uh, 2460. And I think those are already filled out for you. Because you're using a remote device, if it gets hung up, it will kill itself after a period of time. In this case, I've got five minutes selected. I believe that's the default. And then uh, for DSTAR C4FM, you know, you can put a, some information up on the screen that you send out with your account or your, your transmission. In this case, I've got my website in there. And that is all the information you need. So you just need to hit save. And then once you have it saved, um, we have a couple things to do. Um, first of all, you got to turn on the serial port. And back in my settings, I told it to turn on DSTAR and Fusion at startup. And that's why these two started, but DMR and NXDN did not. Now down here, you'll get the status. In my case, I'm connecting to an AMBI server. But if you were connecting to your thumb drive, it would notify you that it was that it was connected. And once that's connected, then you can use the chip, the AMB3000 chip, to do the encoding and decoding for the various networks. Um, everything in here is pretty pretty straightforward. Um, down here on the bottom, you have the status of each one of the networks and what is going on. You have the potential to listen to all four networks at the same time but you can only transmit or well I guess you would transmit on one uh, network at a time so whichever one is highlighted uh, is the one that is active for you to uh, transmit on the uh, button down here for this the, the slide you just click on it it's push to talk you click it again I believe you can also map your, uh, I think your space bar to that too. So uh, you can turn that on and off that way. You have um, for the various networks, now I've got DSTAR and Fusion selected. Uh, so in this case, DSTAR, Reflector 30, Charlie, I can hit link. Most likely somebody is using it, so it's immediately gonna jump into their conversation. Link to R, E, F, zero, three, zero, Okay, so as you saw there, I got linked to the reflector, Charlie, and then what we see down here in the status bar is that we are relinked to reflector, Charlie. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unlink right now. Not linked. Some will give you status messages like linked and unlinked. Some will not. Um, let's go ahead and turn off D-Star. Now up here I have Fusion uh, selected and the Toads room, and I can link to it. And that is one that does not give you that status message, but you can see down here that it does show that you are linked. If you have two of these on, D-Star and Fusion, you can pull the list down here and select which one you wanna do if it's Fusion. Uh, DMR does not put anything up here at the top. What it does though, is it actually is over here under the BM lookup. You can go through various talk groups and uh, whatnot, and if you know their talk group number, you can actually type it in and and uh, link to it that way and connect to it. So in, in here, you would uh, see the uh, last heard, and in this particular case, because we can listen to multiple networks at a time, it would let you know if it was Fusion D Star DMR. The uh, Ambi page we have we have a meter in there. It's it's obviously it's not um, it's it's an estimation. You can. Do Vox if you want to. Um, that really depends on you. It depends on how much background noise you have. Here we have gains for each one of the four services. Uh, so speaker and mic. So you can actually mix those if you want to listen to DMR primarily, but just wanted to have D-Star and Fusion on in the background, you could do that. You can select your respective mic gains uh, for those. Obviously, you've got the, the search groups. APRS chat, I, I don't know. I 
think there might have been a change somewhere in the APRS network. I'm not sure if that's that's working or if something has to be updated. So this is uh, how you can participate on the digital networks without having to have a digital radio in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this content with your friends, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And until we have an opportunity to meet on the air, I have a video right over here that I think you might be interested in.